Are we recording? As far as the reiteration, I'm gonna probably just, you know, do a little introduction and then we'll flow right into it. So, do you think, do you think? Yeah. But um, I don't have an introduction. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. And you go ahead and tell the people who you are. You know what I'm saying? All right. Should I like? Should I look at him or should I? You know what I'm saying? Either way, you good. All right. So, my name is Wadi the Shepherd. Um, many people know me as Wadi Z from the Energy. Come on. If I say I can't, then I can with a T. Come on. Some people know me as Wadi and a Genius. You yeah. can find me on social media platforms at Wadi and a Genius. Yes. But I am Wadi the Shepherd, an artist and producer based out of North Carolina. Yes. And Virginia. Come on. I'll yeah. say other, a couple other places, but I ain't going to say them. Come on. Yeah. Let them know. Um, and I'm just here to, to impact the world in a positive way. Yes. I love that, man. So let's talk about the names as far as the, the nicknames we got, because I feel like as artists and creatives, we all have our own nicknames, right? Right. So with Wadi Z, right, where did that come from? So... Wadi is actually my grandfather's nickname. Word. Right. So yeah. my grandma used to call him that. Right. Um, he was actually, so he actually was born in Louisiana, raised in Louisiana. Okay. Moved out to L.A. with a bunch of his brothers and they started churches. Yeah. Um, so in a, in a way, he was a shepherd. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm not a preacher. I don't right. plan on necessarily right. going and owning a church or anything of that nature. But <laughs> You know, I feel like I got my way of speaking to the people, yes. to my community, yes. right, in a way that they'll listen and really take it in. Right. And it can make them feel certain ways, which is why there's some songs that are yes. like this vibe, some songs that are like that vibe, you mm -hmm. know. Um, mm -hmm. But so his nickname was Wadi. Right. Wadi Z came about because I was like, well, I'm Wadi, but I'm the leader of Generation Z. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so Wadi, the name Wadi doesn't actually belong to me. Right. right, it actually is a family name, and there's multiple Wadis in Generation Z. Mm. But I guess in hip hop, I'm kind of the face of that. Yeah, I'm the face of what I'm Wadis Generation Z face. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Carrying your ancestors with you, though. In a way, yeah. Yeah. In many ways. For sure. So, and that's why I make a lot of songs about genetics. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna yeah. go there. We're yeah, gonna you know. tap in. But uh, as far as okay, so we got Wadi Z down pat. Wadi the Shepherd. Break that down for me. Yeah, so I kind of already touched on it, but yeah. basically I feel like my role is to positively impact the world. Right. So I'm trying to touch as many lives as possible and take them in the right direction if they go in the wrong direction. You Facts. know what I mean? Facts. So in a way, I feel like I am a shepherd. And then mm -hmm. I talked about the fact that I got my nickname from my grandfather, who yeah. was the Lord Shepherd. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So That's beautiful. Yeah, that's why I'm a beautiful. shepherd. Yeah. Appreciate it. Come on, man. Nah, I love that because, like you said, it's just a representation of knowing your role and knowing where you come from, too. Because I feel like that's one thing within our communities. People are starting to wake up now, thankfully, and now that we have the accessibility to information to know, you know, um, it's very important to have that representation of self, of knowing where you come from, so that when people see you and how you carry yourself, that inspired them to know their roots versus trying to be like whomever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's powerful, sure. man. But uh, I wanted to ask, bro, like when it comes to what we were speaking on earlier on hip hop and how you saw the trajectory of hip hop, how do you remain centered in a realm such as, you know? Mm. Now when you say centered, can you give me a little bit more elaboration? Because there's like course. a lot of different ways. No, of course. I got you, bro. So what I mean by center is um, you stand firm on who you are and how you represent mm. yourself. Such as when you came in, you made it sure to be like, hey, look, like, let me make sure I'm prepared. I'm good. Blah, 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 right. Mm. Um, but being in the representation of everyone and having everyone for your target audience. Right. Mm. So what I mean by center is when you enter spaces to where such as like different shows and just different people, different energies. And it may not be a representation of what it is that you are, but you still see yourself in them. You know what I mean? Mm. But how do you remain centered to where you can still be yourself? Because a lot of people are easily influenced from what's around them. This is very true. I think the journey is what keeps me centered yeah. because 
I've seen exactly where I came from. Yeah. And I knew that it was only going to progress. Right. Like, I feel like when they use that term, you know, you just got to have the faith the yeah. size of a mustard seed. I feel like I took that real literal. Mm. So I was like, that's all you got to have? Because I, yeah. I got more than that in myself. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So it was hard for me to even have doubts because I was like, nah, nah, God got me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's gone. The universe got me. Whatever you got to say, yeah. it got me. Right. Like, I know that it's meant to happen. It's just yes. when is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. And so my job was to be prepared. And it took me a lot to get prepared in yeah. the first place. Yeah. Right? Like I was telling y'all earlier how I started out super positive. Right. Then I started giving people what they want, which included that negativity that I, I was trying to not listen to. Yeah. But I was consuming so much of it that it started to be what I put out. You eat, then you, you defecate. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, yeah. So what was coming out of me was the things that I was listening to. And I was listening to it because the people around me were listening mm -hmm. to it. Right. That's what they were putting on the radio. That's what they were programming. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when I uh, started making music in this vein, mm -hmm. I had to take a second and, and realize, well, now I'm running away from myself because I started here. Right. And it took it took... For one, my pop saying he felt like I didn't have to curse in my raps because he felt like mm. I could elaborate enough to use words. Because mm. he used to get on me early about having a vocabulary. Like yeah. early on, he like, yeah. oh, you don't know enough words. You need to write some definitions. Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, So he used to make me learn words, read books and stuff like that. Mm. And then eventually it came to a point where I enjoyed doing that on my own. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But even though I did that, I would still be doing the same things other people were doing that just did it because they couldn't elaborate. Right. And so I, I had to understand what he was saying. It took some time, but then there was this point in time when my younger brother came up to me. Yeah. And he was like, Dad said your your songs were better when you didn't curse. Mm. And I was like, ah. Oh. I was like, why would you why would you tell him that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but yeah. I had to see why he told him that. Yeah. And I realized Yo, I'm making music that I wouldn't even want my own younger brother to listen to. So how am I being myself? You mm. see what I'm saying? If You know, I, I am the same person that I am around him. So mm -hmm. how could I make something that's not suitable for him and right. it's me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I right. was like, nah, nah. So I was like, you're right. I do got to change it because not only do I have three younger brothers, I feel like there are, are so many people older or younger than you that will kind of take heed to you know like what you say right um they'll allow you to guide them mm -hmm. and i learned that with the power of influence when we're talking about these artists yeah. and they get to such platforms and then they're saying what they're saying and how that butterfly effect trickles down yes. you know what i'm saying and affects these mentalities they're programming them mm -hmm. but then what are they doing with it that's why um that's what's great. his name he just uh nba young boy yeah. He just started to realize that the power influence I saw mm -hmm. in the interview lately. And I was yes. just like, I'm glad that he actually was able to come out and talk about that. Facts. Because these kids that are still like doing drive-bys to the music, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like they need to hear that that wasn't the intent. He was just mm -hmm. doing what the industry told him he could profit off of. Yeah. But when you're a true profit, you know what I'm saying? Come on. It ain't all about the money. Come on. So, Word play. I love that. Nah, that's very important, especially someone of his stature, because even how he moves, he's part of the industry, but he's still independent to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because even in how he moves, he's not underneath no one. He didn't have a cosign. He kind of did it on his own. And for him to kind of wake up, because you got to think about it, he got 12 kids. That's a fact. You feel what I'm saying? So I feel like as a father, if you start seeing your own children, just how you had that moment of seeing like your little brother, That's but watching tough. your own children, bro, your seeds um, manifest what it is that you spoke into existence, it's heavy, you know? And I think he probably just had a real moment because he's very to himself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I think just him seeing that within his world realized like, oh shoot, like my influence needs to change. You know? I wonder if that's what it was. I could see that being the case, yeah. but I didn't necessarily think about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, because I think when it comes to, especially being in this realm, bro, like knowing who we are, knowing our capabilities, we're still mortal beings because we're doing our mission in these vessels, mm -hmm. right? 
So when it comes to observing and studying and learning and absorbing, um, you realize like we're not alone in this shit. <laughs> we're not. Though. You know what I mean? So yeah. when it comes to an NBA young boy, I personally don't listen to him. I don't be like, play that NBA young boy. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I respect it. I respect mm -hmm. the grind. I respect the hustle. And there are some joints where I'll be like, oh, okay, but yeah, I, I don't like on Gucci, man. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm like, it's, it's some things. bops, but I'm not going to sit here and cap and act like I listen to them. Right, right. Right? So when it came to that situation, and when I saw the uh, interview, too, I just looked in his eyes. Yeah. And the eyes told me everything I needed to know. It you know what I'm saying? Soul, man. For real, bro. When I saw his eyes, like, the guilt, the resentment towards himself, not to other people, but just like I felt that, and I was like, "Yo, okay." It just yeah. it made me respect it even more, man. But um, mm -hmm. man, so when it comes to your creative process and how you move, like I said earlier, one of my favorite joints is uh, Destiny's Child, and the reason Destiny's being, Children, yeah. or Destiny's Children, excuse me, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, Destiny's yeah. Children. I did that um, on purpose. Exactly. <laughs> no, you knew what you was doing. You knew what you was doing, but um. I love the vulnerability of how you were speaking upon love and mm -hmm. relationships and love within self, love within your loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, the perspective that you brought, I wanted to ask how important is it for us as men to be vulnerable in general? Um, I think it's, it's difficult for me to, to weigh it and put it on a scale. I do think it's important. Mm -hmm. I, but to say how much, it depends on the individual. To you. To me. That's mm -hmm. that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm saying, but like, how is it important to you? Oh, how important is it to me? Yes, sir. I think it's pretty important because when you let when you let people know exactly how you feel and your intentions are, are pure, yeah. I feel like it's hard to have malice against that. And I'm mm. you know, I'm I'm the type of person I'm all about peace, love, and positive energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I still make mistakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in my mistakes, I'm going to reevaluate myself. Mm. And if I feel like I did you wrong, I'm going to come back and actually, like, yeah. give a sincere apology. Because I'm like, even if even if it's something that I said, right? It's somebody I said something to recently. And I was upset with myself after yeah, because sure. I failed to consider their emotions and how what I said would make them feel. And it mm. actually made them feel some type of way. Mm. And they, you know, they cussed me out a little bit. It yeah. wasn't like nothing too bad. I was yeah, like, course. dang. But then I had to realize like, oh, that must've actually hurt a little bit. And I, yeah. I probably should've worded that differently or I should've said it in a different way. Mm. You know what I mean? To more effectively communicate the point I was trying to get across. Right. And then there's also the thought that maybe that wasn't the time to get that point across. Cause mm. that person might've already knew that. And it was just like a sting, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I feel like it's important that we can that we can be vulnerable. Yeah. Because that way we can reevaluate our own selves. Mm. And even if you're not out here exposing that to other people, right. the awareness of it mm. will help you progress. Mm. That's facts. That's facts. And communication, man. It all t it all ties together. It That's comes the key. together. It's communication. And um when it comes to the vulnerabilities, right? What I wanted to ask you was how do you deal with, you know what I mean, like women on your journey and when it comes to that <laughs> department, you feel me? Like how does, how does cause like I, I ain't gonna put your business out there, I feel but I saw you at the Genius Party and you know, I was like, okay. I, you know, they're people. Exactly. Not people. But one thing I respect about you is that you don't objectify them. You know what I mean? Like right. you don't treat a woman different just because this one is more attractive or this one or whatever. Because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So I'm mm -hmm. not saying from like my standpoint, but just in general. Right. So when it comes to women, I know that you don't you know, go in there and be like, ah, right. But at the end of right. the day, we're still men. So I wanted to ask, like, how do you balance that journey within self of becoming more aware and being more cautious to where other people's feelings are in play now? Mm. I think, like we were talking about earlier, mm. I was raised by the golden rule. Treat other people how you want to be treated. Yeah. 
um, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. Like, yeah. so I first of all, and I'm at a stage in my life where I'm trying to, before I take things anywhere with a, a anybody, yeah. really, you know, we talking relationship, relationship, a woman. Yeah, right. That's that's right. the only way it's gonna go. Yeah. But um, a relationship with anybody, mm-hmm. my goal is to one be re- uh, respectful. Right. Because my intent is never to offend anybody. Right. Because it's peace, love, positivity. Come on. Sometimes the communication causes an imbalance. Mm. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to figure out how to balance that back. You know what I mean? Right. So, and I'm also only interested in long-term symbiotic relationships. Mm. Meaning a relationship where there's equal benefits. You know what I mean? Mm. And the benefits can, can vary. You know, it could be I, um, a person appreciates me because I take them on walks like we, we go on walks yeah. um, and I could appreciate them because if I'm like alright I gotta finish planning by the end of this day yeah. and they gonna hit me later in the day did you plan? Right. I can appreciate that you know what yeah. I'm saying so it yeah. it's really the little things sometimes that, that matter the most and I'm trying to learn how to be for one a good friend on top yeah. of being a good person yeah. so those are my first thoughts when it comes to dealing with a woman, if we're gonna talk about a woman in particular. Yeah, yeah. Can I be friends, could I, would I wanna be friends with this person if it wasn't just an attraction thing? Yeah. Um, would they even wanna be, are they interested in being my friend? You know mm, what I'm saying? Like, that's key. Is there benefits in this mm. situation? Mm. Or is it just, cause I'm a giver, so am I just gonna be giving too much? Mm. Are they gonna be giving too much? I don't feel comfortable taking too much. I really don't feel comfortable taking if we being honest. Yeah. I'd rather just go get it myself and distribute it, but I know that's not how it really works in reality. Right. So right. I'm learning on that, that end of the scale, but um, are there benefits in this situation? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think those are the top three yeah. things that come to my mind, like, yeah. you know, is this gonna be a long term thing? That would probably be the last thing. Cause I'm not yeah. I'm the person I'm not interested in those the one night stands personally. Yeah. You know, like things happen, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna approach things, especially if, if it's going that route. Mm-hmm. Could I reproduce with this person? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like Facts. could I raise mm-hmm. even if we're not like cause I'm the result of that. Right. My my parents hardly speak. They don't speak. Yeah. I'm just the midpoint. Yeah. <laughs> I talk to one, talk to the other. Right. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I don't want that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want that for my offspring. Yes. And so, that's that's the first things that kind of go through my mind. My yeah. mind. And that's a process in itself to to figure out Facts. could I actually raise some a a, a being a life yeah. with this person? Yeah. Could we work together? Could we be a team? A team is a group of people with common goals. Could we yeah. be a team? Yeah. It's, and some people say that sounds funny, like to, to consider the team. But that's how I look at it. Like, no, for real. If, do we have common goals? Yeah. Are we going to work towards them together? Does this person have work ethic? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are they just gonna watch me do stuff? Exactly. Like, do they add value? Because yeah. my whole thing in life is I want to add value. Right. If I'm in your life, my goal is to add value in some way, shape, form, or fashion. If I just open the door for you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Add value. Yeah. So if there's no value being added back to me, I really have to like pay attention to that because I haven't done a good job of that in the in the past mm. not that I always did terrible but it was just like yeah. I really had to think about that you know facts oh, that's real like one thing I've heard you say was that you were a giver right yeah what challenges do you face living in abundance of continuing to give but still as you stated not wanting to take either but also trying to learn that it's okay to receive um Challenges, not being wealthy. Mm, <laughs> I, I worded that. Way. <laughs> you know, I will spend my last. Yeah, and it's it's crazy because I did it recently. But yeah. the thing is, there's always a blessing at the end mm. of it, and it's like that's why it's not very very challenging. Yeah, because like yo, I was like literally on my last couple hundred dollars last month. Yeah, matter of fact, not even that many days ago. Right, but it's like I got this program. Mm-hmm. Where I'm, I'm teaching kids how to do stuff, yeah. but some of them don't got rides, so I'm gonna drop them off after school. Yeah. That caused me to have to spend more gas. Mm-hmm. And then there's some days where a student stay overtime to like get some extra practice in or something like that. I'm like, I gotta get them something to eat, something, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm gonna get them something to eat. Yeah. And I'm thinking about myself, I'm like, Man, I'm really gonna have to cook no more fast yeah. food, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but uh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna spend that bread, mm-hmm. and it's getting down to the bottom. Yeah. And then 
it's a day I wasn't even expecting. I just hear, you know, the principal talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, we got paid yesterday. I'm like, yesterday? What? <laughs> <laughs> Blessing, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. yeah. I, it's it's a challenge, but it's not really a challenge because I always know mm. that the energy that that guide me, mm. the frequency that guide me is gonna look out. You know yes. what I mean? Like full circle, full circle. Yeah, it's man. It's a cycle. It is continuous too. <laughs> I'm just trying to make that cycle go bigger and not include low income anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, facts. Yeah. Facts. So speaking of um, when it comes to just being wealthy, man, like how what what does wealth mean to you? Now, when we say wealth, there are physical things mm. attached to that. Right. If we say rich, I'm I'm also like rich spirit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, so I I break it down for you. I got you. So wealth. Um, speaking from because obviously we know the physical aspect, right? But mm-hmm. I want you to break down the spiritual aspect of what wealth means to you, not just talking about money per se, mm-hmm. right? But what does it mean to you when it comes to um, the challenges, as you said, you face was being wealthy because of the spending money. But at the same time, money is energy. You know what I mean? But that same energy and time, but that same time, energy and the money that was spent came back tenfold. Mm-hmm. So what does wealth mean to you and your experience on your journey? Not based off of what somebody else may see or other people see it as, but those words to you. What do they mean to you? Well, so I, I kind of look at it like this then. Mm-hmm. Um, I consider myself to be royalty. Yes. Uh, I feel like other people should. Yeah. There are people that do. But when you consider yourself as royalty, mm-hmm. then you know that you're being born into something. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't born into this world rich right. <laughs> or like $100,000 in my bank account. No. Right. We started from scratch. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? But I was born. I was given life. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I kind of look at the way that uh, music business works or yeah. just writing in general. Because at the end of the day, I'm a writer. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, the way we get paid is off of things like copyrights and right. trademarks and things of that nature. Right. So it's like, I'm going to get it back in royalties. Anything that I'm putting out, I'm going to get back in royalties, including mm-hmm. my art. Yes. When I put out my energy, my time mm. for other people, yeah. it's, you know, some people look at it as karma, right? Mm. Um, what I'm putting out, I know it's going to have a good feedback yeah. because I know what it's putting out. And feedback can only be what it's putting out. Mm-hmm. You know how you, you got a microphone input device, you got a speaker yes. output device. If you put that microphone by the speaker, it's going to overcycle. Mm. It's only getting in what it's putting out. Mm. But it's hitting that cycle too fast. It's causing feedback. But I already know that feedback yeah. is going to be similar to what went into it. Because mm. it is what went into it tenfold. Right. So, mm. it, yeah. And that same feedback could be overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? Just like as when you hear it, it's like, ah. But mm. from like as beings, you know what I mean? Like that feedback can be when you feel overstimulated, when you feel ready to shut down when you feel those yeah. times to where, you know, in giving, you still have to give to yourself to keep giving. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we may go a little too hard to where it's like, okay, it's time to recharge. How are you going to yeah. do this? What are we going to do? So what I wanted to ask in those times um, of recharge, man, what does that look like to you? Like when you spend time in solitude? It looks like writing. Mm. Um, a bunch of writing, listening to music. Yeah. That's probably when I read more. Yeah. Because nowadays I don't really read like that. Yeah. I pick up a book every now and then and like continue where I was at, but I haven't been finishing books or anything like that. Mm. But I probably read the most, I write the most when I'm going through things. And I feel like that's the best time for me. I wish I could change environment so I could experience that. Right. Um, but that'll happen when I start when I start traveling. Yeah. But as of right now, you know, I could just be sitting in my room, jotting stuff down. What happened during my day, so I know how I feel. Mm-hmm. When I capture how I feel, then I can more, more accurately express it when I start writing the rhymes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Fox. it's and it's almost like, hmm, it's so many things I could say right now. I'm, I'm trying to figure let out. Let them out. Which one. Nah, let them out. You good? Um. Oftentimes I think like this, like, mm-hmm. 
when we think about books like the Bible or the Quran, we think about holy books. Right. We think about some of the people that wrote them. Right. Right. You got your Apostle Paul and, and mm -hmm. all these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Some some of the Bible is considered poetry, right? Mm -hmm. So, how did they stop being prophets? Right. Did people stop writing? You know what I'm saying? Damn. Or was was it after a certain group of people were deemed prophets and then nobody mm -hmm. else can be one after this, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think they ever stopped being prophets. Prophets, right. you know what I'm saying? I feel like Nas is a prophet. I feel like Rock Kim is a prophet. Yeah. As Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we think we are prophets, yes. you know what I'm saying? And yes. it's all about what we're doing with our time. Because work over time equals power. So what are we doing with our power? Mm. Um and so when I get in moments like that, yeah, I really take the time to try to assess what did I do with my power today? Mm -hmm. Because we're royalty. We have power. Yeah. When we come into this world, we have power. We might not have money. We might not have diapers, but we have power. Yeah. We got energy. You know what I'm saying? We got these bodies that contain it. Right. We got to take care of them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because once these gone, something's going to happen with that energy, and the energy don't just get destroyed or anything like come that. On. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But while we got it here, what we going to do with it? Mm. You know what I mean? That's big. That's big. Man, so as far as power... Like, a lot of people abuse their power. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? How do you maintain formation when it comes to your power? I think it kind of goes back to that story we were talking about. Yeah. Where I started off as a positive rapper, then I went other ways. And I use those phases in between mm -hmm. to evaluate, okay, I already know I could rap. I knew that when I was rapping super positive. Yeah, but yeah. now I'm learning how to make it sound the way people want to hear it. Mm. So it wasn't more it wasn't so much about the lyrics. I'm glad I didn't put a lot of those songs out because the lyrics were not suitable. <laughs> but the sounds that I was coming up with, the yeah. flows, the beats, that's when I was really getting in my production bag. Yeah. Um that stuff was helpful for my growth. It was progress. Even though the words weren't where they needed to be, right. there was progress being made. Yeah. I'm just now getting to the point where, okay, I took a break from releasing music before mm. and after that Ultraviolet Epiphanies project that he listened to. Right. Right. I took a break before that to mm. get to the point where I was like, okay, I dropped that because I was like, okay, I can still rap. Mm. And I'm also doing other things like yeah. um, engineering my own stuff. So I'm right. like, Okay, my quality's better. I can hear it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I'm like, the next time I drop a project, we're going to do another check-in. Right. Is my quality where it needs to be? Mm -hmm. Is the sound going to attract people? Mm -hmm. Are the lyrics where they need to be? Yeah. You know, it's going to be a full check-in the next time I drop something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so I feel like in terms of staying in formation, mm -hmm. sometimes, and I feel like you probably do this, y'all probably do this as artists as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to go back and listen to where you started from. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, like, sometimes yes. it's almost like I was giving a message to my own soul. Yeah. Like, I listen to my beginning stuff. I'm like, yo, what, why am I rapping about this now? What, what am I talking about? Yeah. That is, like, why did what I wrote in ninth grade mm -hmm. sound like it came from a more mature person? That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where I was at when I was in that mid stage. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like, wow, I went backwards in terms of lyrics. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to always go back to my stuff before and I'm going to be like, okay, did I show progress with this? Mm. And does it align with who I am right. and who I am becoming? Yeah. And that's how I stay in formation mm. as I write out this in formation. Come on. <laughs> and you see why I asked that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Words are powerful, yeah. man. They are. Words are powerful. Word is bond. Word is bond, man. So when it comes to writing, bro, you ever thought about writing your own book? Um, it's actually been in the works, but word. I'm, I'm trying to get out scripts before I get to the books. Scripts, me. word. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really like, I'm trying to do movies, yeah. TV shows. Yeah. Like, honestly, Spike Lee and Issa Rae are very inspiring to me. Yes. Um, because they do things that I want to do. Mm. And some, who is it? It's another person. He's a, hmm, Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Niggas people like that, Childish Gambino. Yeah. These people really like inspire me because they 
They said, all right, I'm going to do the music now. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do the TV now. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to do the movie screen. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, let me let me, let me, me come through and do my thing. Yeah. Like, but they they paved that kind of lane. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, yeah. I, I've seen it's possible, and that's just always been what I wanted to do, yes. especially when it comes to programming. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if I can, if, if our youth grew up watching the things that I want to make, yeah. they're going to be so much better off. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. no disrespect. But think about a movie like A Boys in the Hood, right? right? And, and things like this where they're showing us that at a young age. Because mm-hmm. I saw Friday when I was five. Same. Like, <laughs> well, not five, but a little bit, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, I was, and, and then it's just like, that impacts you. Yeah. Not that it was super negative, but mm-hmm. I hear that uh, Chris Tucker was kind of, he kind of went on to change his life. Yep. He didn't want to do because, it. Mm-hmm. Because, because. He influenced so many people to smoke weed. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Like, yeah. but that's the thing. I was five. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. but I'm trying to think about all of that in advance. Right. Because I feel like we got enough people doing what's already being done. Yes. We need somebody that's gonna provide that balance, yeah. and that's kind of where I found my niche. Is I'm the artist. You're not gonna like everything that I say, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna say some things you need to hear. Yes. Because you need this needs to be input into your system mm-hmm. so you can process it for real. Yeah. Um, and this I'll say this the way my pops told me to say it. Mm-hmm. Every song ain't for everybody. Come on. But I got a song for everybody. Come on. Right. So so you might not like that song. Pop spin, but right. But Come I got on. something for you yeah. that you're gonna be able to relate to. Because yeah. that's just like I told you, I bounced around a lot. So mm-hmm. all my life I just been learning how to interact and communicate with different kinds of people. Yes. Yes. Do you feel like when it comes to having these big, vast ideas, do you have trouble um, getting caught up in the process or do you feel like you have achieved your balance on execution? I get caught up in the process because I'm a perfectionist on the low, on the high probably. Mm. But it's also like I need a team. I come to a point where I don't want to engineer for real no more. Yeah. I know what I want my stuff to sound like. I haven't been able to find people that can provide that mm-hmm. at a reasonable price. <laughs> you know no, what I'm saying? Facts, like, facts. You know, it's just more efficient yeah. for me to do my own mixing, yeah. which has been a setback um, because I'm doing the production. And I'm writing the lyrics. Time. Time. It's, it's taking up the time. And that's, that's where I'm at with it. It's pretty much like, I don't want to go back and mix an old record. I don't even want to go back and re-record it. I mean, yeah. I will if I have to, but that means that's going to have to wait. Yeah. Because I'm trying to make the next. You see what yes. I'm saying? Which is why somebody, if somebody else was working on that, yeah. I'm on to the next. Yeah. And then that song done, let me hear it. Okay, maybe I do need to change that part. I ain't want to, but I can right. hear why mm-hmm. I need to. You see what I'm saying? So I yeah. haven't really executed as much because I put so many things on my plate. And then on top of that, like I told you, I'm trying to teach kids how to do it. Yes. So it's like, yeah. but it's going to happen. Yeah. This year is going to be special. This it's happening. Special. It's happening. Yeah. As it we speak. It works. Mm-hmm. It nah, that's works. powerful, man. And I definitely see that for you too, bro. Like, I wanted to ask too. You don't have to, you know, give us too much sauce. But what I mean by that is on the question I'm going to ask. So when it comes to, let's say like, boom, got an opportunity to write your own movie, right? Mm-hmm. How would you map it out as far as like your script? You know what I mean? Just the breakdown and you knowing the importance of diet. And you know what I mean by that. Correct. And when it comes to the people, how, what, what do you see yourself putting out in that realm of uh, visual television programming and movies? And because, you know, movies are emotion pictures or motion mm-hmm. pictures. Music is emotion pictures. Right. You know what I mean? So right. you got that aspect down pat. So when it comes to the visual aspect, how do you feel like you as Wadi going to represent that into that realm? It really depends because I low key be feeling like I can act, mm-hmm. but I ain't really trying to get into it too much just yet. What? I'm lying. I'm about to get into it. I was going to say, get it here. <laughs> Come on. Uh, but uh, no, nah, but sometimes I feel like I don't have to be the character. Mm. to be the because somebody else could portray the character in a way that I needed to be portrayed yes I want to look at what I make as more of reality 
vision. Mm. I ain't gonna call it television, it's reality vision. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Uh, because I want people to see what reality could look like. Mm. Maybe what it should look like. Come on. Maybe what it would look like mm. if we change certain things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if we did things this way. So I'm gonna show them mm -hmm. the ways that it's being done. I'm gonna show them ways I think it could be done. Mm. And I think also it's gonna depend on the music. Yeah. Or maybe the music will depend on it. Mm. But I want to see. I have a publishing company, Inner Genius. Come this on. is my publishing company. Wrap it up. Yeah. So as you know, like when you're an artist or when you're in the music business in general, mm -hmm. the royalties that we were talking about break down into two different things. Come on. Publishing, copyright owner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not even the person that wrote copyright owner. Yes, sir. Publisher, right? Mm -hmm. So in making movies, if I'm writing the scripts. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm writing the songs, yeah. and then I'm the one pushing the product, mm -hmm. or my company is pushing the product, right. it's just like a way to say, okay, all of this money is just channeling back versus, mm -hmm. and, and plus it creates a third type of, of royalty, right? right? You got your publishing royalty, you got your um, copyright, right. and then mechanical licenses if you ever get to that stage, but there's mm -hmm. a synchronization license that has to happen. Even if you do it with yourself, mm -hmm. there's a synchronization license and that creates a whole different royalty. Mm. Um, it's just like when you get your song featured on a on a video game mm. or a TV show or a movie, yeah. right? Now you got a synchronization license. Yes, yeah, sir. And so that's those pay pretty well if you're doing pretty well. So the goal mm -hmm. is to get my own works yeah. to the point they're doing pretty well. Yeah. If I get the Tyler Perry level, <sighs> come on, you know what I mean. That's come on. that would be nice. Yeah. We got a whole helicopter flying over us. Yeah. We're gonna let him fly. That was a sign, though. It was a beautiful sign. It felt good. But, um, man, when it comes to the inspiration behind the Spike Lee, behind mm -hmm. Childish Gambino, behind, like, people who represent the surrealism into their art, I love how you pointed the fact to where with television, because as you break down the word, telling lies to your vision, you were able to depict it and be like, nah, this is not, that's not me. I'm gonna mm -hmm. give you that real. Because in Spike Lee's movie, or movies, he does a great job at creating that reality aspect of it to where when we watch it, of course we're entertained, but he's mixing food with the medicine by letting people know what's happening during these times. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to, like I remember this one movie he had that's with uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Donald Glover, but it, it was like, released in 2003 bro and it was just about like a family um i'll just give you a brief synopsis it was like a family and um they lived in the hood at first but uh donald glover the father he was just so hype on climbing the corporate ladder you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying but he had uh some trauma because he had a scar on his head and he had a mob of like white dudes just like after, after him and try mm -hmm. to get him and stuff so it was like the irony of how are you, why are you trying to please the same people that hurt you? Right. So then throughout the movie, you kind of see like him raising the corporate ladder to where they moved into a whole like rich neighborhood and mm -hmm. everybody's just looking at him different because they had two children in the movie and it was a boy and a girl. So they kind of showed like the boy's path and the girl's path. Mm -hmm. And then you see like the similarities and the differences. But also in the movie, it was just crazy how he was able to tackle um, the Stockholm Syndrome aspect mm. to where a lot of people nowadays um, you wants to climb this corporate ladder and wants to be on top and do all this but at the end of the day you're still a nigga because what Kanye say you could be a nigga in the, or you could be a nigga or you be whipping the bins but you're still a nigga in the coop you know what I'm saying yeah so it's just like powerful how Spike Lee can do that and I see that for you just how you carry yourself as a person you know you're a uh, student to the game as well as a teacher student but of life exactly yeah. you know what i mean the game of life yeah because at the end of the day <laughs> you know what i mean like we're vessels here on our mission and we're of service mm -hmm. so we do that in our own ways but you also hit another point which is very important is ownership mm -hmm. when it comes to these outlets such as sync licensing because there's people who don't even know how to do that right mm -hmm. but instead of like realizing okay damn i may not have it just yet you took initiative to prepare 
to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Right. And that's very important, bro. That's mm -hmm. very, very important. I just, I personally can't wait to see. My, matter of fact, if you want to collab, I know some independent filmmakers, man, mm -hmm. who's like eager I, and I ready. I told you, I got a camera in the car. We could make a yeah. light, light. Yeah, but no, nah, right <laughs> listen, as a team, I'm going to be real with you, bro. As a team, like, that's where I'm at with it. Like, we know how to step up and lead, but, like, I also know how to play my role. I just want to help put shit to fruition, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's hard because, thankfully, I do have people in my life who's on the same like, level and yeah. same path, but that's where I fucked up. Where I fucked up was I was trying to find people at the same level, but we're all on different levels. Yeah. I had to realize I got to find people on the same path. Mm. And my path, what I realized was righteousness, yeah. whatever that may look like to yeah. whomever, but the path of righteousness. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you can still be on the same levels, but on different paths. Very you true. feel me? Very true. So, no, nah, that's important, man. I just, you know, wanted to say that, bro, because I'm, right. I'm excited to see, but... Listen, if you ever have any ideas, dog, hit me up, bro. Because, like, I got a movie out on Amazon Prime. Right now. Yeah, it's called Panda Bear, man. I made it with my best friend, um, Evan Kidd. Mm. Yeah. And we had, like, a premiere, all that shit. But we was going to release it in 2020. But um, COVID hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had I to do, like, like I the... I saw the advertisements for it, and I never got around to seeing it. Yeah, man, whenever you find the time, dog. I'm gonna check it out, bro. Right, right. Like... Now that Thank you reminded you, me, it's like, yeah, I definitely got to check it out. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, man, just being in that room, I know exactly what it is that you're feeling, bro, because they love to limit us and put us in a box. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to say, bro, like, I don't mind utilizing my resources so that we can get to where we need to go. You know Likewise, what I mean? Man, that's how, For real. And this is what we talking about. This is the NC hip hop scene. Like, yeah. We got to work together. Yeah. We got to. If, if we all want to make it, Yeah. it ain't no, I'm going to make it. Right. And y'all gonna be under me. Nah, it's like... Yeah. It, and I feel like every artist that I personally, like, mm. connected with and built with, it's more like a... If I make it, we own. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, and that's why, like, bro. it's... It's why deviate from it. Right. So if I make it, we own. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But it was already like that. And that's the good thing about it. From like, the jump. Everybody just got the same, like... Mm -hmm. We a community. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, I seen you perform. I know how you be feeling. Yeah. I know what you be on. Right. Likewise. We might collab. We might not. But, hey, yeah. I respect it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. we, if I'm on, we own. Yeah. That's how it is, bro. Nah, no, like, so it's crazy that... <laughs> I'm laughing because you saw, like, you know, we're multidimensional beings, you feel mm -hmm. me? So you saw one dimension to where it was, like, in that song, I know, I'm like water, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To where if someone has a cup, a vase, shout out to Bruce Lee, but you pour it in the cup, becomes the cup, right? Mm -hmm. Even with soda, even with juice, the base is still water, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that song in particular, uh, I knew the vision that Sonny wanted and I knew what she wanted me to bring out. Mm. So, of course, yeah, like it was still me, but when it comes to the overall like artistry, when it comes to what it is I put out and represent, I feel you on just being a perfectionist mm. because you really want to make sure what you put out is received the way it's supposed to be received. But also in that same sense of perfection, that's where I held myself back. So I've gotten to a space now to where um, when it comes to meeting artists and different people, my intent before was, oh, let's collab. Oh, let's collab. And I'm still down to collab regardless. But I've noticed the art is better when you actually build a genuine bond. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody's going to be your best friend. Facts. You feel what I'm Facts. saying? Now, and that's okay. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. it's no hatred. That doesn't mean it's nothing. You know, just two different lifestyles, two different people, bro. That's okay. Yeah. It can still be cool. But when you actually build with people who's on the same path, bro, I feel like that pours into the art. And when it came to you, of course I want to collab with you. Of course I want to tap in with you. But I wanted to have like a one-on-one -on -one with you. Because every time we see each other, or seen each other, first time we seen each other, I was a completely different person. That's when I was with you know who. And, <laughs> bro, yeah, like, for mm. real, I, bro, that, in that time period, that was, like, my mom's first pass, mm. dog. Like, I Rest was not, time. thank you, man. But, like, even during that time, bro, I was, bro, I was doing drugs, just trying to escape, finding mm. so many ways to escape. Yeah. That's why I don't even smoke weed now. 
Word. Because I equate that to me trying to escape, and I mm. finally am cultivating the reality that I want to live in versus trying to escape from it. Yo. You feel me? But going back, going back to the overall collaboration, man, like I just wanted to have a sit down with you and just build with you. Mm-hmm. Because it's like I I see how you represent yourself, but I also see how you know you know how to mix food with that medicine and enter different spaces. Yeah. But I'm like, man, I want to chop it up with him. I just feel like it's bigger than music with us. It is, you know, it is, and and my, DCM included. You yeah. feel me? But just all of us as a whole, man. That's why I love this shit here because I I got to give you your flowers, man. Where it's due. I know you're just getting started on on your journey, doing what it is you got to do. But listen, bro, like that's powerful. What it is that you're doing, you're moving with intention. Do you know how many people? Bro, go ahead. Bro. I gotta say, I gotta give you your flowers. No, 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 no. no, 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 I'm giving yours. No, but listen, cause you, cause you just went through that whole story, and I never like, like this is the first time we actually sat down and have a convo. Yeah. Right. So I want to let you know, like, even though we ain't talk talk back then. Yeah. The energy, I could sense the energy. Yeah. And it wasn't like it was a bad energy, but I could sense that you were in a different kind of space. I was, bro. Like, I could sense it. Yeah. And I, you know, we never talked too much, but like, yeah. going to where I saw you in your performance, yeah, you talk about the, the substance in the song, but I'm saying like, I could sense more than just that. I could mm. sense where your intention was with that. That's Thank why you. I say, oh, he can, he can rap rap, because you're you. doing what I do. Yeah. you give giving me my flowers, I got to give you yours, because you're doing you, the same thing Thank in you. your own way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's like, to see that, I could tell there was growth to that point. That's yes. why I was even at a point where I was like, yeah, I got to reconnect with bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. now that we finally connected, I feel like, yeah, we on the same page. So exactly. You give me, I'll take the flowers. Yeah. I, I'm a giver, but I'll take the flowers. Come on. But you got to take yours. You I will. I got yeah. it, man. Thank you, bro. Nah, for real. Yeah. That's love. Yeah. Thank you, man. Because you know how it is as givers, bro. For we sure. we're so We're so eager to give people their flowers. And I don't, I don't expect nothing in return, bro. Mm-hmm. Like even tonight when it comes to, yeah, I got the Dames Worldwide shit and all that for branding purposes but you know what i mean dcm he about to come out with his podcast you know what i mean yeah. so i was just like hey bro like this is for us this is for all of us for sure you know and i think at the end of the day there's no front man there's no this there's no that we all serve a purpose mm-hmm. we all work together yeah you know and um just seeing how you move man and just how you carry yourself and just man just whew. listen i really gotta do better but Guess what? And that same awareness, that's what makes you you. Because you could easily be like the person who's contradiction or contradicting themselves. Mm -hmm. And we know a lot of people like that, right? Mm -hmm. But for you, what I loved about you is that you were always authentic Mm -hmm. with it. And authenticity is very important because it's one thing to... Cause you know it's 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 trendy to be woke. It's trendy to do this and do that. But when you know somebody embodies it, when you know somebody, for instance, let's go to the Bible. The acronym for Bible is being formed before leaving Earth. For real? Guess what you're doing? And guess what? Your own scriptures and what do you write? Verses. Facts. Facts. So it's just a full circle, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I thought I thought it was like Jesus said basic instructions before leaving earth. But they the same thing. Same it's thing, same it's thing. same thing, but Jesus Jesus is God, so I gotta give hey. credit where it's due. Like if it's basic That's instructions, Jesus. that alone too. Because yeah. you understand the complexities of life when it's actually simple, but mm-hmm. the complexity is just a bunch of simple shit put together. Yes. So you as a communicator, you know how to assess the information to where you know how to deliver it to everyone mm-hmm. versus a certain type of people yeah, you that's, know? that's the micro mm-hmm. you can micromanage it, you can just macro exactly one message boom mm-hmm. everybody get it you all can understand it yeah and another thing man look we building a garden at this point For sure. but um what i love about you as well bro is you don't tell people what to think you show them how to mm. you show them and remind them of the power they have within because your music are self-affirmations you know what i'm saying you performing live and like me recently being tapped into like the visuals and the songs and even remembering the songs. Even at the Genius Party, bro, you saw I was up there like Yeah, man. He was lit. I was, I was but that's what I'm saying. You you're the 
epitome of mixing food with that medicine because you still had the energy to where you walked around, you made everyone feel involved and you kept the energy going. But at the same time, you were saying some real ass shit. I was hoping people could hear me. Yeah. I don't know what I was sounding like, but I was yeah. hoping people could hear, actually hear yeah. it too. Yeah. But if they didn't, that's another reason why I was going up close, because you're going to hear at least a part. That's what I'm that saying. That part is going to mean something. Yeah, yeah. And due to, you know, technical shit, regardless, the message is still going to get across. Oh, yeah. You dig what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. regardless if even having that in your mind still made it happen. For sure. And that's that's what's powerful, man. And, like, mm -hmm. just, just keep going, bro. For real. Mm -hmm. Like, even in the moments, I know we are just now rekindling. You know what I'm saying? And for reconnecting. Sure. But I'm the type of person, bro, to where it's like I read people's energy. Like, I have a good sense of judgment of character, and I'm sure you do too. You know what I mean? Sure. To where it's like, bro, you got a brother. Whatever you need, I'm here. You know what I mean? Like, you've what? seen my journey. I've seen your journey. But you've seen when I was, I had a whole different mentality, a different energy. That's why I always came at you authentic. I never came mm -hmm. at you different because you saw me in the time to where I was trying to figure it out. Sure. You know, and even though I we didn't, likewise. <laughs> no, for but that's point. what I'm saying. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. we we met at a time to where we was trying to figure it out. Yeah, you know what I'm and saying. We really, we really figuring it out at this point, and it's the growth. Think, yeah, and that's how life's supposed to work. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's that cycle. Come on, man. Yeah, I got one more question for you. What advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, um, it's funny because. Sometimes my, my younger brothers be my younger self. <laughs> so the things I be telling them, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I would say one of the biggest things is just hold on to that mustard seed. You mm -hmm. might have a couple of them at this point in time, however old you are, but like, yeah. hold on to them mustard seeds because it's, it's really going to come to fruition. But you mm -hmm. got to have something to plant, you know what I'm saying, when you get to that rich soil. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. that's what I would say. Powerful, man. Thank you once again. Always love. I this is the beginning. You. This is the beginning of something powerful, bro. For sure. Like, I feel For like sure. even though this is a podcast and stuff, like, I love these moments to where we could genuinely sit down and chop it up. For you sure. know what I mean? I'd be forgetting the whole damn mic and the cameras. Yeah, on, I done smacked this mic a couple times. I don't know. The people probably, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my bad. Look, I'm the mic, bad. like, I don't know if you're going to hit me with the left or the right. All right. You hey, know what I'm saying? Man, this mug with a hook, a verse. For real. <laughs> you feel me? Hey, how often do you hoop? 